tag with. So we're going to start a new installment called FRQ Friday. So each Friday, I'm going to record a video um, going over a free response. Now, a lot of these free responses might be from kind of the old redesign exam, so 2013 through 2019. Um, and then some of them will be the new redesign, so 2021 and on. Um, know that as we go through these different things, there might be some things that are different from the current exam, um, but this is just so that we can look at FRQs and kind of see the vernacular as well as how we can approach FRQs. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we have a question talking about bees. Now notice here we've been given a data table um, and you can see on that data table that we are looking at memory as well as we're looking at different treatments. We also see that we have error bars on there. So there's that plus or minus that tells us the variance in our data. They give you a long prompt. That prompt is going to give you some background information. For example, pollination is a process that leads to the fertilization of egg and production of seeds. Some flowers attract pollinators, such as bees, that using visual and chemical cues. When a bee visits a flower, in addition to transferring pollen, the bee can take nectar from the flower and use it to make honey. They then give us more information. Nectar contains sugar, and certain plants also produce caffeine. We're going to investigate the role of caffeine and nectar. Um, they study the effect of caffeine on bee behavior and of course results are given in that data table for us okay uh i'm on the wrong screen give me a half a second <laughs> okay so they then ask us a couple different questions so the long frqs as well as the short frqs are always going to have four parts a b c and d um, for our long frqs it's going to be a combination between eight to ten points while our short frqs will only be four points um so this is a pre-redesigned question, so it's not following within all of the constraints of the new exam, um, but this one's going to be worth 10 points. Each of our bolded terms traditionally are going to be worth one point. So we're going to have to construct a graph. Graphs are usually going to be three points. You kind of look through that, think about, okay, what kind of graph would I do with this data? Think to yourself, hmm, would I do a line graph? No, I can't do a line graph because of the fact that this data is categorical. There's no way for you to linearly put 10 minutes and 24 hours on that X axis. So we make this categorical data. You also have to think, okay, what other things need to be in that graph? Well, probably some error bars, probably labeling of our axes. B is going to ask us to describe the effect of caffeine on the following. So we're looking at short-term and long-term memory. Um, and so we're going to use the data table that we make in A, or I'm sorry, the graph that we make in A to be able to analyze this. And then C is asking us to identify null hypothesis, appropriate control, and then predict results that reject our null hypothesis. All this is part of experimental design that is essential to know for the AP exam. And then part D is asking about a benefit to the plants and a cost to the bee. So without further ado, let's look at the answers that were expected. So we know that we need to make some type of bar graph, again, because it's categorical data. So our graph is going to look like this. Okay, so we need to appropriately label our axes as well as we need to ensure that it is scaled with units. Um, and so if you look on our Y axis, you see that they've labeled it as memory, average probability of um, revisiting a nectar source, as well as you see that they made each little box 0 0.05. You want to make sure that it is a equal scaling. It doesn't matter if you label every single data point, but you do need to make sure that every single like box equals the same amount or the same value. So we go up by 0 0.05 the whole way up that axis, okay? Um, also notice that when they made their bar graph, they just labeled the bottom of it, nothing was shaded. Shading is gonna take a lot of time and energy from you. So it's just better just to go ahead and label it like that. Um, in addition, we will not be able to see different colors. So you're just gonna do the whole thing in black or the whole thing in blue, um, and it's gonna show up the exact same for us. Um, and then also on the x-axis, you see that we've got the uh, control, caffeine, 10 minutes and 24 hours, and I'm not doing good with this whole, like, pointing, okay? Um, you also need air bars. Well, how do I know what to do with the air bar? So if you look right here, you see that you've got the mean. It's 0.83, and this is plus or minus. That plus or minus is telling you the amount you'll go above the mean and below the mean to make your air bar. Okay. Now, another reason why not to shade is because if you don't shade, you're going to be able to see the top and the bottom of those lines. If you shade it, it might be a little harder for the readers to find the parts of your error bar. Okay. And we'll get into a second what error bars really mean to us. So that was part A. Part A is just asking you to give the three things. So did you plot the means correctly as a bar graph? Did you put appropriate units in scaling? And did you correctly plot the error bars? Okay. So the next part we have 
assigned it based on the results, determine the effect of caffeine on the following. Short, short term memory had to do with our 10 minutes. So if I look here at my short term, okay, I see these error bars right here. And I don't know if my mouse is working, but hopefully you can see my mouse circling, okay? So I have an error bar. And as you notice, these are going to the same Y coordinates or the same Y values. Um, and so that tells us that our error bars overlap, which means our data is not statistically significant. Okay, by pure chance, pure chance alone, the um, caffeine at 10 minutes is higher than the caffeine, uh, uh, sorry, the control at 10 minutes. And it's just pure chance. There is no data that shows that in short term memory, caffeine does have an effect. Um, so our answer to A is going to be that the caffeine um, has no effect um, on the memory. Caffeine has no effect um, on the bee's memory. Um, and so this person, when gave us a little bit more information, talked about the standard deviation of the two groups are going to overlap. Um, all you had to do was just explain how there was a significant, um, I'm sorry, there was no significant effect. Long-term memory, again, if we look over here at long-term, let me get rid of all this to make sure we can see. Um, you can see that these error bars do not overlap. The error bar between the control at 24 hours and the uh, caffeine at 24 hours does not overlap, which shows us that caffeine does have an effect. Now, we're not going to leave it as it has an effect. We're going to make sure that we explain what that effect is. Caffeine is going to increase or improve long-term memory. Um, and then, of course, this person went in and gave us a little bit more information talking about how um, the uh, nectar was twice as much and that those error bars are not overlapping. Okay. So, Part C is asking us to describe the experiment. Okay, and they tell you that they're using artificial flowers to investigate the negative effects of increasing caffeine concentrations. So they're telling you um, your independent variable, increasing caffeine concentrations. And then they talk about the number of floral visits and that's your dependent variable. Okay, so that's very important to keep in mind is the independent and the dependent variable. So it says identify the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is going to state there is no effect. Okay, but we need to make sure that we're a little bit more clear on the exam. So I'm telling students to do independent variable has no effect on dependent variable. And so you want to make sure that you're stating that with whatever question you're doing. So in this example, increasing caffeine concentrations or independent variable has no effect on the number of floral visits by bees, dependent variable. Okay, so identifying that, of course, is going to give us that point, as you see right here, has no effect. And um, when looking at these um, scoring guidelines, anything in parentheses isn't required, but I want to make sure that you give the most complete answer to ensure you get the most points possible. Okay, so then we have to come up with a control. Now, they tell us that we're using artificial flowers, so you can't tell the reader that, oh, we're just going to use a normal flower. Well, I want to know how increasing caffeine concentrations has an effect, which means I have to compare it to when there is no caffeine present. So I'm using artificial flower or nectar with no caffeine. So you need to make sure that you symbolize that there is no caffeine in this control. And then our predicted results are going to have to reject our null. Okay, our null said that if I increase caffeine concentrations, there's no effect on the floral visits. So you need to show that there is some type of difference. Increasing caffeine concentrations is going to have a different number of um, floral visits. There's going to be an increase in floral visits. There'll be a decrease of floral visits. Whatever you need to say to symbolize that it is going to be different, that there is a significant difference between having caffeine and not having caffeine. So then our last part, I'm sorry, this actually shows the student that wrote it. So the caffeine um, concentrations will have no effect on the floral visits. Um, and then here you can see where they put it that the control is going to be without any caffeine. And then here you can see that they talk about the predicted results would be the greatest concentration solution will yield a drastically lower number of floral visits by bees in the control solution, no caffeine. So part D wants us to show how um, if there is a lower sugar content, um, how that is going to be an improvement or some type of benefit to the plant. Well, because of the fact that there is less sugar, there's going to be bees traveling to more flowers. So that means that there's going to be an increase in our pollen transfer. In addition, because of the fact that they're able to use less energy, as you see right here, it says uses less energy. If it uses less energy, now it has more energy for other things. You talk about how the plant is going to have more growth, more reproduction. There's some type of process that it can use that extra energy for. And then the cost to the bee, well, they have to go to more 
flowers. And so because they go to more flowers, they have to use more of their energy. Or you could have talked about the colony. Because of the fact that the bees aren't getting as much sugar, their sh honey is probably going to be of lower quality. It's going to have less sugar, less energy. Um, or you talk about that they can make less honey. So I hope that that was helpful. This is showing you the student's response and talking about how that they were, you know, more efficient, could use that stored energy to support other aspects, improving survival and reproductive rates. You could also talk about here, we're talking about the, the bees. Since flying around, visiting plants uses energy, these bees are less efficient in obtaining energy because, of course, they're wasting that energy. So I hope that was helpful. Um, stay tuned for next week as I do another FRQ Friday. Bye, y'all.